exactly how do you find a decent independent mechanic who understands your brand of car? And how about the brand specific electronic diagnostic tools that he might need to get the job done? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. This is a quick tip report, okay? A bit different to my usual stories, aimed specifically at getting car owners like you the information you need fast. They're all inspired by questions from you, which flood my inbox every day. In this case, from Sarah S., who sounds to me as if she is about to divorce her car dealer. I'm not particularly impressed with my local Kia service centres. However, I'm not sure how to find a reliable alternative mechanic with whatever electronic equipment might be required I don't know how much electronic servicing testing needs to be done. Do you know of any good Perth mechanics with experience of Kia? I have a 2016 Sportage. Hope you can help with this. Well, I wouldn't be much of an auto expert if I could not. However, I am located in Sydney and Sarah is in Perth. And just for context, if you're not from around here, that's just under 4,000 kilometres away. A mere 42 hour drive, roughly the same as driving from New York City to LA, so there's that. The reality is that most servicing is just inspection of things like essential fluid levels and components that could wear out, like brakes and dampers, plus of course basic jobs like changing the engine oil. That's the majority of the process anyway. And I am not trying to denigrate good mechanics by saying this, you know. Being a mechanic is a hugely underrated and highly skilled occupation, and there's a great deal of finesse involved too. You cannot be a dummy because of the significant cognitive demands of problem solving. So, on my world, a good mechanic is worth his or her weight in gold. But 95% of servicing is pretty basic. And even the complex jobs in servicing, frankly, like timing belt replacement or putting a new clutch in a manual car or something, they're a bit paint by numbers. And obviously, you don't want to leave anything untightened or out, but still a bit paint by numbers. And happily, this skill set of good mechanicness is fairly portable between the brands of cars, specifically the mainstream brands comprising most of the cars on the road. So that is a happy situation. And therefore, I'd suggest finding a good general mechanic is more important than finding a good independent Kia specialist in the case of Sarah or a good specialist for your brand of car in your case. The way to start here, okay, or... 42 hours drive away, whatever, or anywhere else in the frigging developed world is to ask your friends or trusted associates. Word of mouth is absolutely the best way to find a good local mechanic. And I would love to tell you that there is a Tinder app for independent mechanics or something, but really ask people you trust who they use and who they are happy with. Car dealers piss a lot of people off in the service department, right? There are a great many service department divorces, I must say, and most people who break up in this traumatic way ultimately end up hooking up with an independent mechanic they like a whole lot better. So a lot of these divorcees have already done the research for you. Just ask around, okay? There's a couple of really good reasons to be unfaithful to your dealership too. A, the service department at the dealership is a business unit, a profit center. Not that there's anything wrong with profit, but often it's just unprincipled gouging that goes on in these places. It's quite unbelievable. And the local independent guy, right? Servicing is his core business. He is fundamentally there to do a good job and save you money by not ripping you off. <laughs> There's a concept. And B, 
You actually get to talk to him afterwards, not some concierge at the dealership, right? Your local guy can say, hey, the brakes are getting a bit low, so I know how you drive, and if you come back in three months, that'll be safe, and we'll change them out then. It's going to cost you about, I don't know, 300 bucks or something. The dealer's just going to give you a call, right, and change them out for you now, and here's your big bill. That's just how they roll. C, okay, as if we need reason number three, but the local guy will find you some quality aftermarket parts that will save you money over the genuine parts that the dealer will deploy on your car, which are often sold to you at, frankly, extortionate prices. And you've got to realise that doing any of this does not affect your warranty. It would be illegal to deny a warranty claim on that basis, at least here in Australia. Speaking of warranty, right, the dealership is still the place for you to go for any warranty claims that arise. If you divorce your dealer, or any authorised dealer, even the one you divorce is required to handle your warranty claims. It's kind of like paying the child support, I guess, if we're going to continue this metaphor to, you know, extreme levels. Also, once a year, I suggest, you should ring up your local divorced dealer with the VIN code for your car, which is on the rego papers and also on a plate inside the engine bay. Just ask them if there are any outstanding service campaigns or recalls that are active on your car. They'll just look it up on the computer and do not feel guilty about hitting up your ex-dealer for this or any warranty claims or things of that nature. They do all this work for you for free, of course, but under the radar, they send the parent car maker a bill for their time and effort. They are absolutely getting paid for any time and effort that they spend solving these issues for you. At the risk of sounding like your mother here, okay, get every service done on time, right? This preserves your warranty and it entitles you to full consumer law protection it's the time or the distance that's important with servicing, and you need to get it done, whichever one of those occurs first. On this alleged specialist electronic equipment that may or may not be required, thankfully, nearly all mainstream cars today use a thing called the OBD2 protocol, which stands for Onboard Diagnostics Mark II. It's just a plug-in port under the dash that you've probably never seen unless you've gone looking specifically for it, and it facilitates diagnostic integration via an established industry communications protocol. And this is great news for independent mechanics because plenty of third-party scan tools are going to plug straight into a Kia or any other mainstream car, and they will integrate pretty well for diagnostic purposes. So your local guy on the corner, right, he can easily reset the oil dilution calibration setting for the engine control ECU after an oil change on a diesel, or clear any fault codes that crop up from time to time, or reset the service due indicator, whatever. The electronic stuff is actually easier to handle than it might seem from without. For any budding DIY tinkerers out there, if you're interested in checking this stuff out, the easiest way to go about it is probably to buy something like this little blue driver widget right here. It's a Bluetooth dongle that just plugs into the OBD2 port on the car just there, and it connects wirelessly to your smartphone or tablet. And it'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know about the secret life of your car, but were afraid to ask. It'll clear those fault codes and do a lot of other stuff as well. And it is affordable. You can get it on eBay or Amazon. You just need to install the app on your device and the app is free. That's about it from me. I hope this quick tip has helped you in some way. If it did, you might like to consider subscribing and hit the bell notification icon on the way through as well. Thank you very much for watching.